So we came down here just to do some leash work on, uh, no, come on, hang on. Let's go, place, no, place. Good girl, down. Just to do some leash work on a 3.0 instead of a 2.25 prong because she's really just eating through it big time just with her fear and anxiety. And turns out they're having baseball practice with uh, one of those pitching machines. And we were, of course, we were back behind it and the noise it makes hitting the backboard really terrified her. So we're gonna be down here, nope, for a good woo, 10 to 15 minutes doing nothing. Yeah, doing just nothing just hanging out by it. We will do some healing by it once she kind of listens to it. It's nice though, it goes on and off. Like they'll do 10 in a row and then it'll be a few minutes of nothing, which allows her to kind of settle. But she was shaking when we first started doing this and she's not anymore. And so she really needs more hard things to work through. Um, anytime I see a dog that is struggling with something, we can immediately jump into uh, finding a way to work the dog through that because the more hard things they work through the more other things seem not so bad we had like five dogs go by and she hasn't cared about any of them because um, some of her fearfulness her anxiety trumps her reactivity and so this is just a really good really good thing to use nope So it's, it's two noises. It's not just the backboard noise. Um, it's also the sound of the bat hitting, hitting the ball, that crack that it makes. But the backboard noise is, um, of course, what we were walking by when they first kicked up with it. Or maybe I just didn't notice it until she noticed it. But anyway, she's tried to get off a few times. She's still creeping. Do you see, see the jumping? See that, guys? If you don't let your dogs just sit and struggle, you're never going to improve. And I know we got screaming kids. Good. So I don't even like how she's hanging off. Oh, yep, hanging off the edge. Oh, some of this guy's going to be honest. Place. It comes down to, come on, let's go. Place. A little bit of um, timing, of course and a little bit of physical strength when it comes to really fearful dogs. Come here, down, good, down, hey, down, good. I know, it's tough. We're actually gonna go lay in the shade. This is pretty good, this is way better than it was earlier. No more shaking, she's tried to get off a few times, but no more shaking. So now we're gonna go back behind the base, behind the board. Let's go, Let's see how that goes. Come on. Oh yeah, we're going this way. We're not going back to the car yet. Not done yet. Sit, sit. If I had an hour, I'd be here an hour, no joke. And then I'd be back down here every day we're super lucky to have this within walking distance now, but I'd be down here every day because they're down now with things loosening up, they're, they're down here a few days a week, practicing, playing. I know this is kind of boring, I understand that, but this is, this is what it is, we're just gonna exist. If I can't walk my dog because they're pulling so hard, because they're so nervous or fearful, we're just not gonna move for a while, a long while. If you have time, of course. There it is, there's the backboard noise. She needs to hear about 20 to 30 of those and nothing bad happens to her and just get used to it. Oh, my arm is already feeling it, I'll tell you that, but it's part of it. When, when you have a dog that's in flight, and she gets that way with like larger vehicles and stuff. And then this, <laughs> apparently, um, they become so physically strong. They push through anything. And so this part of it is just how do I not allow her to get to where she wants to go to, to flee? Um, if she couldn't lay down, that would be fine. We would just stand here. And if, if that's what I needed to do, if um, she wouldn't like you guys have seen me work 
the puppy ranger right now who can't lay down yet with this kind of stuff. We just stand and then I ask for a sit and then eventually he'll default down. Come here, come here. Good girl. She wants to lay down because she's been patterned to do so, but she, she doesn't necessarily have to. Um, if I thought it was, if I just couldn't get her to do it, if it was too much for her, we'd hang out in a sit for five to seven minutes and then I bet she'd lay down. Or when the, the balls stopped hitting the back and they took a break, then I'd ask for my down. And when the balls came back up, she'd probably need to sit again. I'm just telling you different dogs at different stages in training will have different reactions. I'm just gonna have this around my, my wrist just because ugh, she when she wants to go, she becomes as strong as an ox. I probably can't get her to do this, but I'm gonna try. She pro I, mean, I mean, I can get her to do it, but she probably won't stay like this, but I'm gonna try. Just to cock those hips, and relax them a bit. Tail is, eh, it's not out, but it's not tucked. So it's not, oh no, she's like, what are you touching my tail for? You want to go to that side? Mm. Oh my gosh. Fine. Go to this side. Whatever side's comfortable. But tail uh, out, hips to the side <laughs> is idea. That doesn't look comfortable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, but she's okay. But uh, hips or tail just not tucked. Hips cocked to the side is ideal. But I didn't ask for it right away. Look, look at her. Look at her gripping right there. You see? Look at that front paw. Look how um, stressed out it is. Yeah, see, she wants to be like that. I'm gonna let it go. The tail I would adjust, but I'm gonna let this go for a little bit. Try some healing. I'd have this behind my leg because you can feel stronger to the dog that way, physically stronger. But if I do that, she tries to also switch sides to, uh, to get further away. Oh wow, this is so much better than earlier. Oh, before I, I could hardly hold on <laughs> when she would, because she was darting. See, what I'm doing, you guys see, I'm making a fist. She's got about three inches of slack, and I'm just holding strong. So every time she hits the end of the leash, I just kind of tug her a bit, and I'm just holding strong, where she can't go behind me, and she can't go in front of me. She's trying to problem solve. She's like, well, maybe if I go to the other side of Bethany, that'll be okay. See, I'm, I'm allowing all of this pushing into me right now. Just right now, because this is way better than before. And if I do this five more times and she's still pushing into me, then I'll bump her off. Oh, actually, that's a little bit too much. Hey, there's a difference between leaning on me and pushing into me. Let me be super clear. <laughs> she wants to lean on me a bit and she's doing this good, okay. But she wants to push into me, I'll bump her off. Let's go, good. And she's gonna do aces going back the other way. Good girl, let's go. Good girl, let's go. Good job. Good job, let's go. You guys hear all the kids screaming, playing, having fun. Let's go, good girl. Good job. She's panting a lot. We haven't been here very long. It's not from exercise. It's from working hard. We've got some doggies coming up. See how she does with them. Probably fine. She's seen several. Let's go. Let's go, good. Yeah, she doesn't care about them. She's still too concerned about the, the baseball. Let's go. Good. Watch it first, is it? Good. All right, that one's nice and cool. Come, let's go on this one. Sit. I'm just gonna hold pressure. Sit, you can do it. There you go, good. And we're just gonna hang out. She's looking at the doggies over there. There's some little dogs over there. You can, I don't know if you can see them at the top of the frame. I stuck them in there a little bit. Two little dogs. Hey, good. She's just looking at them. Hey, good. No, it doesn't mean go anywhere. Ugh. 
she's already doing so much better. It's like they, they have that initial fear or whatever it is. And if you have the time, you don't always, I understand that, but like when you have the time with your dog and you just hang out and you block flight response, you just block it. You gotta correct it if it's intense bolting, but then when it's just these little moments of, oh my God, oh my God, just block it. Um, whether it's body language or leash, just don't allow it. You force them to deal with it. You get some amazing stuff. Hey, oh, you wanna lay down? That's fine. She goes under though, I gotta watch her. She might be sneaky, sneaky down, but yet dart under the bleachers. Wanna lay down? See what I mean? I'm pushing into her with my knee. Yeah, that's what I thought, sit. Trying to use it as an out. So we're gonna hang in a sit and that's it. No. It's just a person. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, no. Why are you trying to go to someone you don't even know? They're not gonna save you. So she's gripping, you guys hear that? Just a little bit of nervousness. When, they're, when their feet are unstable, that creates some nervousness too. They have to focus on their feet and what their feet is doing which allows them to not be so concerned about other things. But I don't know why you were thinking that guy was gonna save you. You don't even like new guys. That tells you when I say other things are not as important, dogs, new guys walking by, talking to me, um, those things become so much easier because she's dealing with the, the ball fear, the ball noises. She's so much calmer. I missed it. I tried to pick up my camera and show her flinging. You guys see that? So I'm blocking her going any further. Relax my leash when I feel her. Nope, there it is. She was doing so good and then she just was done, you know? So see how I've got tension and I'm bracing? Boy, am I bracing. When I feel her not pushing that opposition reflex, then I'll relax. I'm gonna need to move. She's using my leg as an anchor. Now I'm gonna relax, good. Make sure she doesn't try to go backwards. Come on, let's go. Give her a second and then I motivate her to move again. Good girl. Come on, good girl. Let's go, sit. Juno, I'm gonna actually give her a second. I know. The guy came towards the fence and was encouraging the kid with a lot of loud, yeah, you're awesome. Oh my God, that was so fast. And I think that kind of triggered her to be like, mm, let's, let's get out of here. And she does have a habit of going under rather than over when she's nervous. So I just let her chill for a second. Now I'm gonna ask for my SIT. Juno, sit, you can do it, sit. Good girl, good job, very nice. It's easier when I'm standing up. So I'm gonna stand up for another couple of minutes and then I'll sit down. Makes her feel more secure if I'm standing. So I'll do that another couple of minutes, then I'll sit down do again. Another, another bout of walking. No, nope, let's go. I'm gonna slow her down, extra slow. She's pooped out mentally. So let's get that extra slow walk. See, this is so much better. In the beginning, I would have filmed um, how tough it was, but I, I actually had two hands on the leash because she was just going forwards and then behind me and then forwards and then behind me. And this is nice. This is our fourth time doing this, I think, after like the, the breaks that I've been filming. And look at that. She's pushing the heel a little. Heel. Good. Really beautiful. Nice job. Let's go. Good.